power. Thank you, Father, for hearing and thank you for answering in Jesus' precious name. Somebody give the Lord a deep clap and a loud shout of praise. And shake the hands of three people around you and tell them, get ready for an encounter and then you can take your seat. Get ready, get ready, get ready for an encounter. Get ready for an encounter. Get ready for an encounter. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. I want to give the Lord the praise and thank my father for the privilege of standing here this morning. I do not take this privilege for granted at all. And I appreciate God for the privilege of being raised. It is fully confirmed that spiritual covering determines destiny coverage. The extent to which your destiny will cover destiny coverage. The extent to which your destiny will cover is determined by the covering spirituality that you have. It is also confirmed that company affects identity. You can identify a person by the company they keep. And I'm amazed and surprised and excited in God at the impact of this company on our lives. God servant Pastor David preached yesterday and shared many things with you about the impact on his life. It's, it's just inevitable until you help, until you change your company, you don't affect your identity. The things that we have seen all around the world are connectable and traceable to the company that God has helped us. We have seen, been to countries and seen presidents of nations and the whole cabinet coming for meetings, submitting to the authority of Jesus. We have mayors of cities coming for, the, for services, bowing for prayer, mayor in Leeds, mayor in Houston, Texas, and so on and so forth. We have nations of the world coming in for conferences and meetings. Last meeting we had about 50 something countries represented and some of them came here with us for this conference. And we see the spiritual lineage and the spiritual tree reproducing and multiplying all over the world. I prophesy to you today, in your own life, you shall see multiplications and replications. If you are saying amen, you say a louder amen. You shall see multiplications and replications. Somebody shout the loudest amen. Very quickly, we are speaking on the mind the battlefield of the redeemed. The mind as the battlefield of the redeemed. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 3 all the way to verse 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 all the way to verse 5. He said, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty true God to the pulling down of imaginations, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Very, very briefly, we shall be having as our focus first to understand the place of the mind in life's battles. Second, we shall be looking at examples of people who lost because of the mind. Third, so we shall understand the place of the mind in life's battles. We shall see examples of people who lost because of the mind. Thirdly, we shall see examples of people who won and ruled because of the mind. And then, fourthly, we shall look at the impact of, of the mind on life generally. And finally, we shall see what to do with the mind. Now we are approaching, as we approach this season of gross darkness, an economic holocaust on the face of the earth, one of the places that require very serious attention is the mind of the believer. The mind of the believer. The mind of the believer has the capacity to make a person Either to be a victim of the hard times or to be a victor in the hard times. Why is the mind so important? Three or four reasons. First, the mind 
is the battlefield of the redeemed. The mind is the battlefield of the redeemed. For so, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Number two, battles may be fought with weapons, but they are won from the mind. Battles may be fought with weapons, but they are won with strategy, which is a child of the mind. Third, life is lived inside out, not outside in. It's lived from the inside out. The meaning is, you cannot win in the mind and lose in life. And you cannot lose in the mind and win in life. It's impossible. You can't win. You can't win in the mind and lose in life. And you cannot lose in the mind and win in life. Fourthly, the state of the mind affects the state of life. That is why a madman is practically useless to society. Why? Because the mind is gone. The state of the mind affects the state of life. That's why he said, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4, 23. And finally, number five. The most critical target of enemy confrontation is the mind. Enemy confrontation. Confrontation with unscriptural imaginations confrontations with ideas that exalt themselves above the world confrontations from rebellious thoughts but i announce today in the name that is above every name someone here you will win the victory over the mind if you are saying amen say a louder amen if you are saying amen, shout the louder believer, say amen. amen. While speaking with our father yesterday, he said, If you don't cast down imaginations, imaginations will cast you down. If you don't bring your thought into captivity, we just had an elaborate preaching just now, your thought will bring you into captivity. But I decree you will not enter into that captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, let us look at examples of people in scripture that lost because of the mind. And the first example I want to give is the children of Israel. The children of Israel, very pathetic story. They were in Egypt for 400 years and 30 years they stayed in Egypt until Egypt entered into them and in case you don't understand what I mean it's like taking a bottle of coke empty bottle and you fill it with river water and you put that coke that is filled with river water inside the river so the river the, the river the coke the bottle is in the river and the river is in the bottle that was what happened to the children of israel they were not only in egypt egypt was in them the greatest challenge of moses was not bringing them out of egypt it is bringing egypt out of them Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? The people had come out of Egypt. They have stepped out of Egypt. But Egypt has not come out of them. So in Numbers chapter 11 verse 4, all the way to verse 6, you saw them lusting after Egypt. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again. And said, who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. Was it free? The cucumbers, the melons. 
Look at what they were longing for. The leek. The onion. Garlic. That will set your mouth on fire. <laughs> this was what the people were lost in for. Like slaves. That fell in love with their chains. And will not want to be free. Somebody was taking them to their destiny. They were longing for their history. Somebody was taking them to their destiny. They were longing for their captivity. It was like, it's like the circus elephant in, in, in India that they tied a rope on the leg so that the elephant will remain within a cycle. And then the elephant remains in that cycle. If he wants to get out of that cycle, the rope will pull it back. And then it remains in a cycle. And it remains like that for a long time until they remove the rope from the leg of the elephant. But the elephant does not leave the cycle anymore. As far as it was concerned, it was not permitted to leave. Even though the chain on the leg has been removed, the chain on the mind has not been removed. They kept it there until the chain transferred from the leg to the mind. That was what happened to Israel. After 430 years in Egypt, their bondage transferred to their mind. And Moses brought them out of Egypt but couldn't bring Egypt out of them. And God said to Moses, you know what? These people who refuse to be delivered and this bondage cannot come out of them. None of them will enter the promised land. I will just make them roam about in this wilderness until the last of them perish. Only their sons will enter the promised land. Apart from Caleb and Joshua who have another spirit. See, if you have another spirit, you must live another life. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? He said, these are the ones that will go into the promised land. And it was Caleb and Joshua alone that went into the promised land. I announced to somebody here today, every chain in your mind that is limiting your destiny, today that chain is broken. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest, amen. Every chain in your mind that says you cannot cross where you have been that say you should suffer hard times with the people i announce that chain is broken <laughs> lift your hands and say in the name of jesus every chain on my mind limiting my destiny is broken now Give the Lord a praise. Take your seat. Now, the, the, so only Caleb and Joshua and the children that were born in the wilderness, who, did it, who were not born in Egypt, who didn't have Egypt in them, those were the people that entered the promised land. Numbers 14, 26 to 23, you can reference that later. You will enter your promised land. Our second example is Gideon. In Judges chapter 6, if you read verse 14 to verse 15, you see Gideon, a mighty man of valor. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? This was a man that carried heavy potential of delivering a whole nation. But look at what is tying him down. And he said unto him, Oh my Lord, wherewith thou shall I save Israel? What do you want? Why are you talking like that to me? Is my family not poor in Manasseh? Am I not the least in my father's house? A man that carried the might to deliver a nation was limited in his mind by the spirit of fear, by the spirit of poverty, by inferiority complex until he had an encounter that deleted that mentality and he was able to step in and, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Beloved, if God is on your side and you are on your side, there is no devil that can be on the other side and succeed. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? The worst form of limitation is self-limitation. 
that is why I stand here with authority to announce to somebody everything that is limiting your mind and limiting your destiny by the time this world is over that limitation shall be broken that limitation shall be broken now look at examples of people who succeeded who won and ruled with the mind because of time i'm going to rush at this example number one joseph joseph's story is to me very very exciting and there are three things i want you to know about joseph first of all joseph was in the prison and he kept on interpreting dreams for people because he believed in his own dream and he believed in the interpretation of the dream if he didn't believe his own dream and he didn't believe his interpretation there was no way he would interpret other people's dream he was saying even though i am in prison now the palace is my place i believe that my dream will come to pass so tell me your own dream i'll give you the interpretation I don't know where you are today, but I announce to you the palace that is your place, you shall get there. Secondly, Joseph was in the prison, but he didn't keep only prison cloth in the prison. He kept palace cloth. Such that when Pharaoh sent for him, he didn't wear prison cloth to Pharaoh. In Genesis 41 verse 14, he changed his raiment. When Pharaoh sent and called for him, they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. He shaved himself and changed his cloth. He said to the cloth, you know what? This is the day I have been keeping you for. I knew I would live here. I knew I would go to the palace. And I knew I would need palace cloth. Is God speaking to anybody here? And he wore the palace cloth. The prison didn't limit his mind. He wore the palace cloth and stepped majestically out of the palace and stood before Pharaoh. Don't wait for the future to happen. Happen to the future. <laughs> hey! I say don't wait for the future to happen. What do you do? Happen to the future. Prepare for the future before it arrives. It doesn't matter where you are now. You can prepare for the future before you arrive. Before it arrives, you believe that shall the Lord say amen. And this is the third one that is most interesting. When Pharaoh called him and he has appeared in prison cloth and he, had, he stood before Pharaoh, they only asked him one question. I have dreamt a dream. Can you interpret it for me? Yes, he interpreted the dream. Right? If Joseph stopped at the interpretation, Pharaoh would have said, thank you. Please give him 15 hours there and return him back to the prison. By his gift, he gave interpretation. But by his mind, he gave solution. The gift brought him out before Pharaoh. But the gift could not keep him out of prison. He said to Pharaoh, this is the interpretation. Seven years of plenty will come and after that seven years of famine. And the plenty will not be recognized because of the famine. That was where his job description stopped. But he now went an extra mile. And he said, you know what, Pharaoh, I want you to appoint a man, a wise man. He was describing himself. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. He was describing himself. Appoint a man, a wise man, you know, the kind of person that can achieve all this. And Pharaoh said, Who are, why are you prescribing another person to me? You are the person. Somebody give the Lord a shout of victory. Listen to this. I don't care what gift you have. That gift may cause you to see some results but it may not take you into your destiny necessarily it, it takes your mind for you to arrive at your future and i pray for someone here today the correct mentality is going to usher you into your correct destiny you believe that shout the loudest amen look look at your number say use your mind 
and you will and you will fulfill your destiny give the lord a shout of praise I'll give one or two more examples and then we'll begin to round off. The second example is the example of David. Every Israel saw, all the Israelites saw Goliath as too big to fight. David saw him as too big to miss. This man is too big an adversity to confront. David said this man is too big an opportunity to miss. And he went at him. And while David was talking to Goliath, he said, come to me. And I will take your head from you. I will cut off your head. He had no knife in his hand. He was eyeing the knife of the man. That is, by the time I finish you, I will carry your own knife and use it to cut off your head. Beloved brothers and sisters, what you don't see coming will never come. If you want to see it, if you want to seize it, you must see it. David saw it ahead of time. Even though it was, he was in adversity, his mind made him to gain victory. I don't know who is seated here today and there is a Goliath in front of your life. I declare that Goliath shall collapse. Say the loudest, amen. amen. And finally, third example, Isaac. In the, in the land of famine, Genesis 26, verse 1 to 3, and then verse 12 to 14. Everybody was thinking of what to eat. Isaac was thinking of what to harvest. Mind. Mentality determines reality. Everybody was thinking of what to eat. They were looking for what to eat. He was gathering what to sow. The rest of it is history. Listen, if you have a different mind, you must live a different life. It doesn't matter the Holocaust. It doesn't matter the situation of the land. If your mind is different, your life is different. On your return back to Shiloh, return back from Shiloh to where you have come from, the people who know you will see a different you. Can you say amen like a believer? Yeah. One young man sat in church and he said, I was preaching in one midweek service. And he told himself, while listening to the message, he said, how do I move from millions to billions? And he sat and he listened until light flashed into his mind. He got a thought that he should decrease his expenses and increase his investments. And then begin to spend, give himself three years and spend only from his investment. In a short while, he has entered the ten-figure range. Beloved, you are not where you are because the devil is too powerful. If you come to your senses, you come to your changes. And I'll talk about that later. That was what happened to the prodigal son in the prison. A change of sense is a change of season. Now, that was his case. In the year of 2007, when we were at the Abuja Stadium, July 2007, July 2007, massive crusade, filled the place, and then we're there again in August, we're there, that's 13 years ago, we're there again in August and September. Twice the rain fell on us. And then at that time, the government of that time said they won't give the place, or the authorities said they won't give the place to use again for church. And there and then I announced to the people, I said, we are going to build the equivalent of our own stadium. And in this case, the rain will not fall on us there because we have a roof. And we'll build what is bigger than that stadium. That was what the mind said. That was what the thought said. And in a short while, it became a reality. Somebody here, what God will speak to you and what will cross your mind from here will soon become your reality. Very, very quickly in the next few minutes, what is the impact of the mind on life? On life? The impact of the mind, number one. I've said many of them already. The state of the mind defines the state of life. The state of the mind defines the state of life. The Bible said, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The state of the mind defines the state of life. Mentality defines reality. 
Number two, the state of the mind defines the state of life. Mentality defines reality. Number two, the renewal of the mind equals the upgrade of life. He said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, be transformed. The renewal of the mind equals the upgrade of life. The renewal of the mind equals the transformation of life. Equals the upgrade of life. Number three. A change of mind provokes a change of life's season. Your season changes when your senses change. A change of mind provokes a change of life's season. I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not too fast like pastor. Uh, should I be, be faster? All right. All right. Again, number one, the state of the mind defines the state of life mentality defines reality proverbs 23 7 as he tinkered in his heart so you see number two the renewal of the mind equals the upgrade of life when the mind is renewed life is upgraded according to romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 the renewal of the mind equals the upgrade of life And go ahead. Number three, a change of mind provokes a change of life season. A change of mind, your season changes when your senses change. A change of mind provokes a change of life season. The prodigal son came to himself and he began to think that changed his season. A change of mind provokes a change of life season. Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 18. Number four, very important. God hears and responds to thoughts like he hears and responds to prayer. Ooh. God hears and responds to thoughts like he hears and responds to prayer. Why do I say so? Ephesians 3.20 Unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly Above not just what you ask, but also what you think. So he's hearing your asking. He's also hearing your thinking. He's hearing your asking. He's hearing your thinking. He can answer your asking. He can answer your thinking. That is why the Bible said, while they, were, they are yet speaking, before they open their mouth, I will hear. And before they call, Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24. They have not spoken yet. I saw their mind. I saw their heart. I read it from their heart and I answered them. There is somebody here. I believe that God is about to hear even the communications of your mind. That is why you must guard your heart with all diligence so that God will not be hearing rubbish from the heart. Number four, number five. The mind affects access to God's voice. While Peter taught on the vision, the Spirit of God said, Acts 10, 19, it affects access to the voice of God. As Peter taught on the vision, the Holy Ghost said, Matthew 1, 20, as Joseph was thinking of these things, while he taught on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared. So, there is a way God visits you based on what is going on in your mind. There is a way God speaks to you Based on the community, what your mind is on per time. Number six, the mind determines the acts and possibilities of God. The acts and possibilities of God. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine. The acts and possibilities of God. Philemon chapter 1 verse 14. He said, without your mind, will I do nothing? Without your mind. So God needs the cooperation of your mind to do mega things in your life. Did you hear what I just said? God used the cooperation of, he needs the cooperation of your mind to do mega things in your life. And number seven, the mind determines the stability of life. A stable mind is a stable life. It, it doesn't matter the storm. It doesn't matter what is going on around the world. If your mind is stable, your life is stable. Job chapter 23 and in verse 13. Job 23 and in verse 13. 
he said, but he is in one mind, and who can turn him? He is in one mind. His mind is, is concrete and solid. What kind of holocaust can turn him? What kind of pestilence can turn him? I announce to you today, when men say they are cast down in this season, you shall be saying there is a lifting up. Shout the loudest, amen. What do you do with the mind? In conclusion, within the next four minutes, what do you do, do to enhance the mind for triumph in hard times? What do you do? Number one, avoid sin. Bishop spoke extensively on, on that to us already. Because iniquity corrupts mentality. Iniquity destroys destiny. We are called to glory and virtue. Second Peter 1, 3. And sin makes us fall short of glory. Romans 3, 23. Avoid sin. Avoid sin. Number two. Avoid both the wrong association and the wrong communication. The wrong association. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. The wrong association and the wrong communication. Ten spies destroyed the destiny of millions by what they said to them. In Numbers 13, 31 to 14. Avoid the, the wrong association and the wrong communication. If anybody is not talking your talk, give them space. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? If anybody is not talking revelation, not talking revolution, not talking faith, give them space. Are they your friend? No. Are they your enemy? No. Who are they? You know them. Give the Lord the shout of praise. Number three. So number one, avoid sin. Number two, avoid both the wrong association and the wrong communication. Number three, renew your mind continually with the word. Study, listen to the word. Renew your mind. We saw it already in Romans 12, 1 to 2. Renew your mind continually with the word. Why? What you hear feeds your faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And also what you hear determines what you fear. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 11. All Israel shall hear and fear. What you hear affects what you fear. So instead of hearing things that make you afraid, hear the word. What you hear determines what you fear. Number four, think the word. This is different from renewing your mind and listening. Now think the word. Think productively. Think possibility. Think the word. Think productively. Think possibility. Because he, has, he answers according to what we ask or think. And I don't want you to forget this scripture, Proverbs 21.5. Proverbs 21, 5. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. There are people, if you open their mind, what fills it is prosperity. What fills it is plenty. What fills it is abundance. What fills it is possibility. Let, let, because what fills your mind determines what flows into your life. Think the word. Think productively. Think positively. Think the opposite of your situation. And finally, engage the power of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord is the spirit of a sound mind. Second Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 6 and 7. Engage the power of the spirit. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. So you are not afraid of the, of the, of the devil or of the holocaust. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Is somebody here... Is there somebody who receives something here? Is there somebody who is about to face this season with audacity? Stand on your feet with a shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. Hey! Place your right hand on your head and say after me, say, Father, I receive a sound mind. I receive the grace. To function with the correct mentality. I shall not be a victim of enemy adversity. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I prophesy, I declare, it is done. Can you give the Lord a shout of victory? And help me. Amen. Help me shake the hands of seven people. 
Tell them you shall win the battle. You shall. Hallelujah. Please let's be seated one more time for that expository and powerful word from the Lord we have just received. Give Jesus a big, 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 big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Right now, in this hour of visitation, it is 